Toxtricity can be an absolute monster if used like this. Its base 114 special attack is already pretty solid, but the true sauce comes from its ability Punk Rock. This boosts sound moves by 30%. We pair this with its signature stab move Overdrive, along with the 140 base power beast, Boom Burst. But it's still not done. The Throat Spray held item gives us a plus one to special attack after using a sound move, and we can fix its bad speed with Shift Gear, which doubles our speed. The Cherry on top is using Terra Normal to boost Boom Burst even further, and there's truly almost nothing that can stop this thing in full setup mode. Look, Toxtricity is a poison purple guy that plays the electric guitar. I'm all about it, but this thing never quite gets enough love, but that's what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. I have a crazy goal of hitting 400k by the end of the year, and you could definitely help out. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so from the team preview, I'm seeing a Samurott. Now, a lot of the time people are gonna lead off with this thing because it can set up spikes and sprinkle some Legos all over the place while also getting damaged. So I actually decided to lead off with the Scizor because I have a nice little U-turn here and I do make the right call as they do Ceaseless Edge. And that is gonna make the place a whole lot more spiky. The good news is I now get a U-turn off. Also, why is Hisuian Samurott so tiny? The thing is like literally a foot and a half tall. Anyway, U-turn is actually gonna knock this thing down to it's Focus Sash, which is kind of fine by me. I get some huge damage there, can save the Scizor for later, and at this point decide to go into whatever I like. So, this team kind of has a lot of support for the Toxtricity. One way I can do that is with the Tailwind on the Noivern here. So, I decide to go Noivern just because I know that I outspeed. I would prefer there not to be any more hazards set up, and I'm just going to end up going for the Flamethrower, which obviously is going to take care of it, and also cover for a potential switch. But they do just leave this thing in, and down goes the Narwhal. So, Noivern is a pretty quick little fella. I also have the Eject button to be able to outspeed things like the Porygon Z coming in here, set up a Tailwind, and then as I get hit with an attack, switch out into something like the Toxtricity. Turns out, however, this duck is absolutely zooming, fires off an Ice Beam, and outspeeds and kills me, and that means that, hey, this is a Choice Scarf Porygon Z, and I have uh, I've just been rubber ducked. So that is what it is, but the good news is while I do lose Noivern, it does allow me a revenge switch in. And so this thing being Choice Scarf is actually gonna allow me to take advantage of the fact that I know that I can take at least one Ice Beam for sure. And then Toxtricity is like, I don't even need extra Tailwind speed. I can go for a Shift Gear here. So they're gonna end up switching out the Porygon Z because they do not wanna stay in an Ice Beam as Toxtricity decides, you know what, it is time. I'm gonna go for the Shift Gear jam out over here and that is going to give me a nice little sharp speed boost we also get an attack boost that doesn't really matter but i think it's kind of fun for people to be like hey is this thing gonna hit me on the physical side this guy's shifting gears over here we just want the speed however and we have now shifted to maximum overdrive and it's about to get a whole lot more scary so i'm gonna go ahead and commit the terra normal put the diamond on this dude's head and we are out here glimmering you gotta be wearing sunglasses indoors if the toxicity is busting out the diamonds, I can now outspeed and go for the stab, now stab boom burst, with the extra damage, not only from the punk rock ability, but also now from the stab normal type, and that is gonna absolutely obliterate the Reggie Drago. Not only that, but it even gets scarier because now I'm able to pop the throat spray and give myself a plus one in special attack. So at this point, we are extremely fast at plus two speed and also hit so insanely hard with the plus one special attack and all the boosts it's got going for it. They now decide to go into Chandelier thinking, hey, this thing can't be boom bursted. Psych, I just go right for an overdrive instead, which is also gonna be sound based, gives us the boost, and at plus one is enough to take care of the Chandelier. So at this point, we are absolutely rolling as they actually decide to go back into the Porygon Z. And interesting fact about Porygon Z, even uh, with the Choice Scarf, and if it's timid plus speed nature, it's actually not quite gonna have enough to be able to outspeed us uh, with that plus two. So they're actually gonna end up committing the Terra, which is wildly unfortunate because I was like, surely they don't have a ghost Terra and they in fact have the ghost Terra. That's gonna block a boom burst. While I do outspeed, of course, it's not gonna be able to do anything and I should have just clicked overdrive there, but boom burst is just fun. This now allows them to fire off a try attack where I'm actually able to live, which is amazing. Uh, having all my health there definitely allows that. And now I can just finish it with an overdrive. I'm like, okay, at least I get a second chance here. We have the bulk, baby, as now they are gonna switch into the Magnazone, who does resist both of my moves at this point, but I am way too damn strong. Even an overdrive is gonna do over half, which means surely a boom burst 
is going to be able to do it. And they decide, yeah, Porygon Z is not going to be able to make it happen for us. And sometimes you got to run from the Rockstar, baby. It is what it is. So that's going to be the end of the game there. Toxtricity can absolutely pop off and do way more damage than people expect. And you already know I got this bad boy lined up for another battle. So this time we're going up against a wildly scary, looking like a pretty standard OU team. There's, you know, threats like the Dragonite. King Gambit is extremely scary. Pretty much everything on this team is kind of going to be pretty top tier. So this actually is a extremely good match. And let's go ahead and jump into it. You may have noticed there is in fact another Samurai out here. So as they're going to lead off with it, I'm going to do the same exact thing and bring out the big meaty claws. And uh, I'm just going to be like, you know what? I have no reason not to just go for a nice little U-turn here. They can Ceaseless Edge all they want. It's mostly fine. As they're actually going to end up switching out here. Leads me to believe that thing is not going to be Focus Sash like the last one. And a lead U-turn is always nice. It allows us to see what they want to bring in here. And I can get myself a little matchup. The momentum is always key. And it's trying to stay on top of that, putting them on the back foot is uh, always nice. Especially going against a team that is very threatening like this. So, on the free switch, I decide I'm going to go into the Mag Mortar. Well, I know that I can take any attack this Cinnamon is the Winamon ass thing wants to throw at me. But also, I can threaten their switch ins, which would be something like the, you know, the Great Tusk or the Samurott. As they are actually going to end up going into the Samurott, I don't want to go right for the hard prediction and click the solar beam or thunderbolt right away but i do click a flamethrower and it's actually going to get me some nice little chip here so at this point if i'm samurott i probably just click ceaseless edge just to get some uh, some more spikes up and that's exactly what they're going to do and i know that i can take at least one and also have the potential to get the flame body to activate because this bod is hot as hell it does not however but this does allow me to go for the solar beam i actually Probably could have just clicked Thunderbolt at this point, but Solar Beam with the Power Herb is way more fun. and just guarantees that this thing dies, as at this amount of health, I'm not faster than things like the Great Tusk to be able to make that worthwhile. So, I'm able to absolutely beam that bitch into the Oblivion, and that does take care of the Samurott. So, now Great Tusk can come in pretty safely here. Of course, it is going to be faster, but also... It's even going to be Protosynthesis, which does give it a speed boost. Tells me it's going to be more of an offensive Great Tusk. And uh, this thing is just always extremely scary. I just decide to stay in because, listen, not a lot wants to switch in here. And also, Magmortar isn't going to prove super useful for me in the rest of this matchup. So, takes me out with a headlong rush. Apparently, this bot is not quite hot enough I had to get that freaking flame body. But that's fine because now I get a revenge switch, which is always amazing. And I decide I'm going to go into Noivern here. And... As this thing comes in here chirping, sounding all crazy, I realize with that speed boost it probably actually outspeeds and could potentially kill me with an ice spinner, which would be bad. But uh, it turns out likely they do not have it. They're going to end up switching out here and they're going to go right back into the Golden Go. So I'm totally fine grabbing some chip on the Golden Go. Draco Meteor is going to do a little bit of damage here. Unfortunately, it does drop the special attack as while I do have the flamethrower coverage, now it's not quite going to be enough. So what I decide is actually just to go for the Tailwind it turns out instead, I just get some coins thrown straight at my face like I'm some type of fucked up stripper. They should <laughs> call this Make It Hail, for real. But uh, that tells me this is a Choice Scarf Golden Go. So that is going to instead actually activate the eject button a little bit prematurely. Hey, it happens. Anyway, this now allows me a free switch. So I'm like, okay, well, I can at least take advantage of the situation that I'm looking in front of. And that is that Golden Go is over here with the stuck into Make It Rain. And this is going to allow an opportunity for Toxtricity to go ahead and shift some gears. We don't even need no Tailwind, as uh, they're actually going to go back into the Great Tusk here. This thing is still at full, but the good news is that at least it has used its booster energy. So it doesn't come in and get a speed boost, as I'm able to go ahead and boost mine sharply, and uh, we are looking quick. So one thing I can do here is to guarantee that this kills, as you already know, bust out the diamonds and go for that uh, extra little boosted boom burst. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Toxtricity, honestly, a lot of the time, all it needs is one nice little shift gear. And if they don't have special sponges, they're going to have, you're going to have a bad time switching into or even just taking attacks from the punk rock boy over. So I can go for the boom burst, ends up taking care of Great Tusk in one hit. That is truly the power of this fella. We're just out here literally melting things. Nothing wants to take it. And also now we get that throat spray. Now we're sitting at plus one special attack and looking pretty solid here. So on the open switch, they now decide to go into the Iron Moth. And I'm thinking, hey, this is perfect, except it's actually going to activate that Quark Drive with another booster energy and gives himself 
a speed boost. And this thing at plus one is going to be able to outspeed me at plus two. But I'm still thinking that I can probably take a non-boosted attack here. They go for the sludge wave and we barely hang on with 15 HP, which is amazing. Allows me to fire off another boom burst. And that is going to take care of the huge threat that is Iron Moth. Still kind of annoying that uh, the double booster energy is going to allow it to outspeed there. But it is what it is. Because now it can go into the Dragonite here. And at this point, the threat of an extreme speed is just kind of eminent. There's not really much that I can do. I can't really afford to switch as Toxicity is not going to be able to get really too much uh, going in terms of more speed. So I decide to let it go down here. It does finish me with that extreme speed. And uh, that is mostly fine as we were able to put some huge holes in the team with the Toxicity there. So now I get a Revenge Switch and I decide to go into Scizor. So Scizor has the option to go ahead and set up a Swords Dance here. In this thing's face, I'm like, you know what? I might as well... I, bullet Punch is going to be pretty nice here, and in general I know that Scizor can kind of take attacks here. So they decide to go into the Golden Ghost. This is kind of why I'm fine going for the Sword Stance, make my claws nice and sharp, because even though I know a Bullet Punch isn't going to one-hit KO, uh, I definitely can take at least one attack from the Golden Ghost. So I go for that Bullet Punch, and it is able to hang on, but it just fires off the Shadow Ball at me here. And, uh, of course, we know this thing isn't Specs, it's Scarf. I can take that, at least one of them, and then fire off another BP to finish him off. So, that takes care of Golden Go, and that's kind of just a, an annoying fella out of the way. And the Meaty Claws are looking meatier than ever. So, now they decide to go into King Gambit. They are down to two Pokemon left. It's going to be this King Gambit along with that Dragonite. So, I have a position here where, especially with the Supreme Overlord, a Sucker Punch likely kills me, but I decide to make the aggressive play and think that they are going to go for something else. I try to close combat, and the Sucker Punch does finish me off there. So, down goes the Scizor, but I do still feel like I do have the necessary resources to kind of finish off this thing along with the Dragonite, because this now allows me a switch into the Woolly Ass Mammoth, and I can just go for... Uh, the Earthquake here, thinking they likely just stay in, and uh, a Sucker Punch probably does maybe get close to knocking me out here. I barely live it with 12 HP, which is kind of insane, and uh, an Earthquake does finish off the King Gambit, which is uh, great to see because most of the time King Gambit will just come in and just ruin your day with its uh, Supreme Overlord. Now, the bad news is it knocked me down to the range where my Life Orb actually knocks me out, and that is not great because... Now we have ourselves a good old Mexican standoff with the Dragonite, and it actually puts us in a very unique and kind of tough spot here. So, this Hitmonlee revolves around a very specific strategy. So, they can go into the Dragonite here. This thing comes in at full health, and there's two options here, right? Either they go for something like a Dragon Claw, which just straight up kills me, or they Dragon Dance. Now, I'm supposed to be built to go for an Endure, get knocked down to 1 HP, and then have not only really strong in reversals, but also an upper hand on priority. So I decide to go for the Endure, thinking surely they just knocked this thing out here. Um, it kind of just making a Hail Mary. Turns out they actually click the Dragon Dance. My hope was that they would, you know, knock me down to one. I then activate a Lychee Berry, get to plus one attack. I can then upper hand the inevitable, you know, extreme speed. Doesn't quite end up happening here as uh, I can at least try for a second Endure. I figure, you know, at least I can go for a second one, and I, it fails. It, it basically is like trying for a second Protect. It doesn't end up working out for me there. I definitely should have knocked off turn one, and then endured the second time to at least break the multi-skill. So definitely gonna be a misplay. I figured it, kind of, it, it could go either way in that situation. Um, but at least, you know, now Noivern comes in, and yeah, they do still have that extreme speed, so it is going to be able to uh, outspeed with that and finish off the game. So that was a super good match, honestly, against one of the scarier teams uh, and a solid player, and uh, it came right down to the end there. And uh, I definitely played the late game a little bit recklessly, especially with the Scizor and then the Hitmonlee play. But I still thought that was a really fun game, and that is the is the game we play, boys. Thank you guys very much for watching. For real, I do appreciate all the support on these videos. You guys have been amazing lately. And uh, definitely make sure to hit that like button on your way out. And I'll see you later. Peace out.